Contrary to what a lot of people will tell you, one tricking is not the best way to climb in solo queue. Maining a champ is good, sure, because it gives you a comfort pick that you know inside and out, but playing multiple champions is good for two reasons. One, you learn the game from other perspectives, which is going to make you overall just better. The second and more important reason is that sometimes your one trick just won't fit into a game. Maybe you'll end up with 4 AD or AP champions, or your champ will just be useless into the enemy team composition altogether. These are just a couple of the many issues that lose one trick's games in champ select. For that reason, it's really important to widen your pool at least a bit. At the bare minimum, you want to have all your bases covered. And that's why the focus of our video today is how to make the perfect champion pool. But before we get to the main course for today, I just want to take a minute to remind you that while meta videos and other content like this are great ways to pick up some quick tips, if you're super serious about improving, you should head over to ProGuides.com. Our coaching staff is made up of top level players and they're available 24 7, so it's always a good time to stop by. And for just $7.99 a month, you can take your ProGuides experience to the next level. Our premium sub gives you access to all of our courses and bootcamp content, and we'll even throw in a 10% coaching discount. If you're ready to take your gameplay to the next level, trust me, it's worth every penny. Now let's talk about how to build a good champion pool. Okay, so the very first thing we have to talk about when it comes to building a good champion pool is that you sort of need to follow the meta. I'm not saying you can't play off meta picks. What I mean is you can't just force the awful picks into your pool because you enjoy playing them. For example, Set and Pantheon support have remained relatively popular picks for pretty much all of Season 12, while having massively negative win rates. One argument a lot of people love to make is, if X pick is so bad, then why does Y streamer one trick it to GM or Challenger? Well, the thing is, in the vast majority of cases, it's just that the person is a challenger level player making the pick work, and they could do the same thing on a better pick much more easily. They're probably also playing the pick just a bit better than your average gold or plat player would be, which can also have a massive difference. So, as a general rule, move away from the champions that are constantly showing bad numbers on stat websites and your own OP.GG, and focus on building your pool with the tried and true options. Now we move to the covering your bases part of picking the champions. Every role is obviously going to have its own way of doing that. For example, if you're a top lane jungle or support main, you should really have at least one frontliner that can engage fights for when the rest of your team won't fill that slot. While AD carries like Ash and Callista do have forms of engage, it should never fall on them to have to be the only one. To help conceptualize this, I try to keep a little mental checklist of what my composition has and what it needs. This varies game to game since there are tons of different comps in League of Legends. Let's take a look at what a very general basic team comp may need. Your average team should have engage, disengage or peel, a mix of physical and magic damage, and at least one, preferably two, frontline champions. Again, this is just a very basic set of things you should look for in most comps, but there are things to add and take away depending on the other champions that get locked in. Let's say your AD carry is Samira and your mid lane is Annie. In that case, you don't really need peel or disengage for your comp at all. Instead, it can be good to double down on having extra engage or some form of AoE CC or even damage to wombo with your teammates. What if the enemy team takes Fiora? In that case, you would need to add a new box to the checklist for having someone that can match her in the side lane. Plenty of games get lost even when super ahead simply because a strong split pusher gets out of hand and totally takes over the game. Another more advanced checklist thing is making sure you actually have a DPS champion on your team for teamfights. This is especially important if the enemy team has some beefy frontliners. Even if your team has multiple damage dealers, if they're all front loaded champions like burst mages and assassins, you're never gonna get past beefy tanks and juggernauts. You may need to fill the role of being a tank breaker. This isn't something that just anyone in any role can fill. You have champions in mid and even support that can go Leandris, like Brand or Zara, but they aren't exactly tank killers. Yeah, they do good percentage HP over time, but they aren't ever gonna just 100-0 a tank in the teamfight like Kog'Maw, Kindred, or a Fiora can. 
So while you can help fill this role as a mage in support or mid, it's ultimately up to the other three roles to fill this. Something else to try to keep in mind is having a good spread of early, mid and late game strength on your team. Let's say you're top lane and the rest of your team has picked Elise, Syndra, Jinx and Lulu. If you pick a high scaling champion like Vladimir to go with the rest of your laner scaling, the high tempo Elise now has no lanes to work with. She'll get bullied by enemy laners with high prio and you'll never really get to scale up since the enemy team can just run the map. It would be much better to pick some type of early game champion that can work with Elise to win topside and then snowball to carry in the mid game until the rest of your team is online. There's also champions that overlap between roles. For example, Gragas can be an AP threat if you build him like a mage or be a form of engage and disengage as well as a frontliner with a tank build. There are also those that break away from the average team comp we were talking about entirely. For example, split pushers don't really need to check out any boxes since they carry with a solo queue playstyle. That said, since you're playing to win solo, you also have to make sure you get a good matchup. Another example are poke champions. Sometimes you can abuse the enemy team when they are the ones that are not checking off any boxes. If the enemy team comp has no engage or diving threats and you have a poke comp that you know how to play well, you can solo carry games by keeping your foes perma chunked out. Now, I get there are some players out there that just don't like playing certain classes of champions. For example, we all know that friend that absolutely will not play support because their ego will not allow them to be carried. It's no coincidence that those people usually play absolute hyper carries like Master Yi or Vayne or some flashy playmaker like Zed or Lee Sin. On the flip side, you have those support players that play enchanters only. This can definitely get consistent results over time, but you're gonna have those games when they get paired with an aggro AD carry like Trist or Draven and won't be able to fully abuse their strong laning phase since enchanters tend to be pretty passive. If you absolutely refuse to play entire classes of champions, it's not that you can't climb, but you definitely hinder yourself to some degree and will straight up be the reason your team loses games from champ select. This video isn't about building the most fun champion pool, it's about building one that works for climbing in solo queue. So now, let's take a more in-depth look at each role fully to help get an idea of exactly what you need. So in the top lane, what are we looking for? In this role, there are a lot of champion classes that get played. So let's take a look at our checklist from earlier. With the pool of meta champions in top lane, you should be able to easily fill any of those slots when your team needs it. Let's take an example for each one. If your team needs an AD threat, you have Fiora. If you need an AP threat, you've got Mordekaiser. Malphite gives you a form of hard engage and a really beefy frontliner, and his ultimate can also be used for peeling carries if you need to swap up your playstyle. Again, these are just examples. It isn't to say those are the exact best champions to fill each of those niches, but rather just to give you an idea of what your champion pool should look like. In the jungle, just as with top, the pool is so deep that you can cover everything on the list. You don't need to religiously play hard carry or flashy champions every single game. You should again try to balance it out. The tank options are pretty interchangeable. Sejuani, Zac, Maokai all sort of fill the same niche, so whatever you like more works. But for the carries, there's a bit more to think about. As always, you need a good mix of AD and AP options, but the carries in this role sort of fall on a spectrum from glass cannon with a ton of damage to beefier bruiser options. You don't want to end up as Kindred on a team with two other marksmen and a control mage mid lane, so it's a good idea to have some beefier options mixed in there. A good example of a solid champion pool for jungle would be a Mumu, Kha'Zix, Kindred, Evelyn and Belve with Elise as an option if you want to win the game as quickly as possible. Now for the mid lane. Here, you don't generally have to check off so many boxes. There are some picks with varying amounts of utility, but in general, a mid laner's job is simply to do damage. So that said, you just want a nice mixed pool of different damage types, as well as options for early and late game. Here, any mix of control mages and assassins is good. But what I really recommend for all mid laners is that you add one beefy melee champion to your pool to counter assassins. Galio is a meta mid laner that does this, but other options like Garen and Set are insanely OP champions that absolutely wreck them at all stages of the game. In the bot lane, your role is much like the mid lane. 
you just need to be an effective damage dealer. The majority of bot lane mains stick specifically to the traditional marksman, but trust me when I say you need to add some AP carries to your pool as well. Seraphine, Swain, Karthus, Hymer, Ziggs, these are all broken options that win or at least neutralize pretty much every matchup and scale super well. Take at least one or two of those and mix them in with a couple of other AD carries. As for choosing your AD carries, you should make sure you have options between scaling and early game picks. Caitlyn is a surefire way to bully lane, but if you really like to snowball hard, picking up Tristana or Lucian instead of the higher risk, higher reward isn't a bad idea. You should always know how to play at least a couple of hyper carries as well. Finishing things off, most support players fall very heavily into one of the three main classes of support. Usually, a support player is almost entirely enchanters, mages, or tanky engage picks. But really, it's borderline mandatory that you try at least to play some champions from two categories, if not all three. Enchanters are best when your team already has a really solid comp for team fighting and you just want something to add an extra layer of safety to your team. But if your team doesn't already have a frontliner, they can feel borderline useless. You can't really be a backline support without a frontline to protect you in the first place. Also, you should ensure you have some picks that pair well with aggressively early game carries. If you have a Draven or Lucian as your AD carry and you pick something super passive like Sona, there's a good chance that they'll not only fail to snowball, but even straight up tilt from you picking something that doesn't synergize with them. This doesn't necessarily have to be an all-in kill lane support like Leona, but at least something with a lot of early game pressure like Nami or some other mage. And that wraps things up for how to build the perfect champion pool. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped to give you a better understanding of how important drafting is and helps you start to pick out some more options to add to your pool. In fact, why don't you go down to the comments section and let me know what role you play and what you're going to try to start picking up. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next one, but until then, good luck on the rift and may the LP God smile down upon you.